Hello Saints, today we study our final dispensation, the dispensation called Kingdom. Now in the last six dispensations, uh, we've seen how God's actions were unique during each of them. How God dealt with mankind by using different administrations for different people for different circumstances. But one thing is certain, the end of this road ends in grace peace and God's will for mankind to be with us forever. Now we know in each dispensation there's six distinct elements and it's no different than this one for this one. So first we need to start uh, with the element of managers, the managers of the kingdom dispensation. We're looking at Israel, the nation of Israel, the two witnesses, the 144,000 and the resurrected saints, the time period we're looking at from the rapture to the great white throne judgment, the human responsibility, we're looking at faith plus works, enduring until the end, and to follow the rules set by Christ Jesus as he rules and reigns during the 1000 year millennium. Now the failure will be all those people who follow the antichrist, the falling away, the unbelief, the apostasy. Uh, hating the two witnesses and, and killing them, ignoring the uh, preaching angels and following Satan at, uh, you know, as he returns after the 1,000 years. Now the judgment is going to be death at the second coming and also the second death at the, the uh, white throne judgment. Now the grace that God hands out is all who have faith plus endure to the end shall be saved. They'll enter the earthly kingdom. They'll live in peace. There's no death. There's no sickness. And uh, they'll have eternal life. They're going to inherit the new heaven and the new earth. And the uh, new Jerusalem also. So at the conclusion of the grace dispensation at the, uh, the rapture of the body of Christ, the ushering in of this dispensation, the kingdom, takes place. Now, the dispensation of the kingdom is a continuation of the dispensation of the law. Okay, God put his plans with the nation of Israel on hold. He did this when they rejected Jesus Christ as their Messiah. They crucified him and then they killed the last prophet Stephen Okay, by stoning him to death. Which Apostle Paul uh, at that time was known as Saul. He took part of that stoning of Stephen. And we saw how God stops their program and starts the dispensation of grace through Paul by revealing to Paul a mystery, the secret program kept hidden in God since creation. So Paul launches the gospel of grace, salvation by faith alone, and this lasts over 2,000 years, and then something wonderful happens. The mystery of the catching up, the rapture takes place. Jesus comes to receive his body unto himself, and takes his body to heaven with him. Now, we start the period known as the last week, or Daniel's 70th week, which is a seven year period foretold by all the prophets that takes place just prior to the second coming of Christ Jesus. We know from prophecy and from, from the words of the Lord Jesus that this special seven year period will be the worst event in history. The prophet calls this tribulation Jacob's trouble. And we see this in Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Now Jacob's trouble is also called the great tribulation. Jesus says this, he calls it once, uh, the great tribulation in Matthew. And twice in the book of Revelation. Let's take a look at those real quick. Our Lord Jesus is speaking here in Matthew 24 verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. In Revelation 2 verse 22. Behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation except they repent of their deeds in Revelation chapter 7 verse 14 and I said unto him sir thou knowest and he said to me 
These are they which came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Now take note here in this verse. These are they which came out of great tribulation. The phrase came out here translates from the Greek meaning uh, it is a continual uh, situation. They are coming out. Okay. So at the time this question is asked, he's seeing them come out of the, tri the tribulation. This isn't after, but it is during the tribulation as they're being martyred and they're coming out and they're going to heaven because uh, these are the, the saints during that time period. Okay. So this period is also known as the day of the Lord. There's the day of Christ for us, the church, which is us. This includes the, the rapture and our participation at the judgment seat of Christ. And then there's the day of the Lord. This is for unbelievers to punish the wicked and to purify the nation of Israel. So the prophecy of the tribulation period is written all throughout the Old Testament in the four Gospels. And it's also talked about in the last books of the Bible. The books from Hebrews all the way through Revelation. Now Daniel's 70th week involves a lot of specific events that take place. Now in this study isn't so much designed for the specifics of those seven years, but we'll uh, at least do a general overview, okay? Now, as soon as we leave in the rapture, for a moment, there's not going to be any believers on the earth. The only people left will be those who are left behind and the unbelieving nation of Israel, the Jews. Now, God will reinstitute the faith plus works program, the law, through the nation of Israel. God will also send two witnesses. Now, there's a lot of speculation of who these two witnesses might be, but everything points to Moses and Elijah. They'll be the first ones to start proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. Now, notice I said the gospel of the kingdom. Remember what John the Baptist was preaching in the wilderness. John the Baptist was saying, Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, here it is again. The kingdom gospel is starting back up. Now remember, this, this period of time is for the Jews alone, okay? It's not for the Gentiles. God gave the world over 2,000 years of grace, and that ended with the rapture, okay? So, and how do we know it ended? Now, take a look at Romans chapter 11, 25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And we see here that Israel was made partially blind for over 2,000 years until the harvest of the body of Christ is complete, the fullness of the Gentiles. We see no mention of any Gentile churches in prophecy in the Old Testament or in the book of Revelation, okay, when it comes to the body of Christ. Now, this last week for Daniel's people is specifically for the Jews, Daniel's people. Look here at uh, Daniel 9, 23-27. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee. Now this is the angel talking to Daniel. For thou art greatly beloved. Therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people, the Jews, and upon thy holy city, to finish the transgression, and to make an end of sins, and to make a reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the Most Holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince shall be seven weeks, and threescore and two weeks. The, sh the street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the Prince shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with the flood and unto the end of the war desolations are determined and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate so what this all boils down to is this. The seven-year tribulation period, Daniel's 70th week, isn't for the Gentile nations. It's strictly for Israel. God is picking back up where he left off with Stephen. Okay. So what about those 
uh, left behind at the rapture. Well, it's bad news. Very bad news for them. Very bad news. Now, God is no longer interested in the Gentile nations. His focus is on the nation of Israel, the implementation of the earthly kingdom, the second coming, and establishing the 1,000-year millennial reign. Now, I often get the, you know, I get asked the question, will people have a second chance after the rapture? And the answer I give is twofold. First, you won't have a second chance. Second, not being Jewish gives you a one in seven billion chance of uh, making it to the end. Because God is only going to protect a small remnant of Jews during the reign of the Antichrist all through Daniel's 70th week. The rest of the world will be left to deal with this Antichrist and his evil army. The delusion for those left behind will be so strong that only the ones God protects supernaturally, the elect, will be able to withstand it. The entire world will fall away. The apostasy. God will give the world a grand delusion to believe the lie. The lie that the Antichrist is really the Christ and they'll follow the Antichrist, they'll take his mark and they're going to be subject to God's wrath. Now, unless you're one of the remnant Jews being protected by God, you don't have a chance. So my advice to you is get saved now. Don't wait. Okay? Now, back on track. So the two witnesses will be warning the Jews that they're in the 70th week of Daniel. And people will need faith plus works. They'll need to keep the law and endure until the end to be saved. Okay? Now keep in mind, the earthly kingdom will be filled with believing Jews who endure to the end of the tribulation period. The believing Jews will be ushered into the kingdom. They'll marry and they'll repopulate the earth. Now, back to the two witnesses. God will put them on the earth to preach for three and a half years. Look at Revelation 11, verse 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. Now, some will believe what the two witnesses are preaching, and most of them will be Jews, and only a small remnant from these Jews will actually make it. Most will be killed by the Antichrist, martyred, okay? And the rest will be protected by God himself till the end. Now, there's some evidence that the Jews uh, who flee the Antichrist will flee to the east, to the mountains, over to a place called Petra. They'll be provided for and protected, just like God provided and protected the Israelites during the Exodus, okay? Now, there's also 144,000 elect. These are the Jewish males, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes, making 144,000 virgin males. And they'll also be protected, and they'll be preaching the gospel of the kingdom around the world. Okay, also, God will send angels to preach the world to the world, the remotest parts of the earth. The angels will go there, and they'll preach to everyone in their own language. And we see what they're going to be preaching here in Revelation 14, verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and to every end, kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornic fornication. And a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. Okay, so we see who's preaching during this time. Now, let's look at the particulars concerning the judgment that's going to take place. God chooses seven angels to administer the judgment. And each angel will have a specific duty at a specific time. Each of the seven angels has a trumpet and a vial. And these trumpets will blow consecutively one after the other during the entire seven-year period. Okay, And after each sounding of the trumpet, they will unleash the specific judgment that God has planned for them at that time. These are the vile judgments, the most severe of God's wrath. Now, we don't have time to get into each trumpet and each vial in this study, but I'll say this. By the end of the seven-year period, by the end that comes around, the entire earth will be changed. New land will rise from the ocean. Major landmass will sink into the ocean. Basically, total annihilation. 
There's going to be nuclear events. The sun is going to be seven times hotter. The moon's going to go dark. The sun's going to go dark and much, much more. The water throughout the earth will be poisoned and undrinkable. Most of the food is going to be destroyed and the majority of the population just won't make it. Friends, I beg you, don't tell anyone that they have a second chance because you'd be lying to them, giving them false hope, setting them, setting them up for a complete failure, okay? If you do anything, urge them to get saved now before the rapture takes place. Now, the second coming event, again, we don't have time to get into the specifics here, but I do have the uh, specifics in other videos on my channel. The parables in Matthew, Luke, and Mark are all about the day of the Lord and the second coming after the rapture, okay? Look at the videos that I have titled The Dragnet Parable, The Wheat and Tares, uh, Who Are the Ones Taken and Left in the Fields, The Virgin Parable, and I think there, there might be a couple more. Now, those are all about the events of Daniel's week, the second coming, the day of the Lord. Lots of great information on those videos, so I suggest you watch them. After the Lord returns, he'll gather his elect nation, Israel, from the four winds, okay, north, south, east, and west, all over the globe. And unbelievers will also be gathered by the angels and taken to their deaths, okay, and that's also on those other videos. So, the ones left here on earth are the believers and the ones taken are the unbelievers the complete opposite from what happens at the rapture okay now again check on my video uh, my channel there's a video called uh, the rapture and some others and they're all about the second coming and the order of events the ones taken the ones left okay and uh, unfortunately the majority of the church believes that the ones taken and the ones left is a picture of the rapture well it's not it's not at all you have to watch those videos to understand that now the population of the earth at this point will be very small okay Isaiah talks about the population and uh, in Isaiah 24 verse 6 therefore hath the curse devoured the earth and they that dwell therein are desolate therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men are left Isaiah 13 11 to 13 and I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Now the word precious here translates back to meaning rare, okay, or rarity. Something that is hard to find. Something uh, that, you know, is more precious than fine gold. It's, fine gold is very hard to find. Okay, so again, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. Also, another verse where we see how rare mankind will be by the end of the tribulation period. It's in Matthew 24, 22. And Jesus is speaking and except those days should be shortened. There should be no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Now look at what Jesus is saying here, okay? The days are shortened to keep the elect alive. Those are the ones he protects. So basically, the rest of the world is gone, all right? They don't have a chance. They're all dead. They're gone. And so, and like it says, it's going to be, man will be as rare as fine gold so do you still believe there's going to be a second chance if you miss the rapture uh, you shouldn't nevertheless all the gentile nations remaining there's going to be a few remaining will be brought before the lord at the throne of his glory we see that in matthew 25 and these will be separated as sheep which are the saved and the goats which are the unsaved now to the sheep he's going to say, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. That's in Matthew 25, verse 34. To the goats he's going to say, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, the lake of fire prepared for the devil and his angels. That's in Matthew 25, 41. Thus, the earthly kingdom, the kingdom of heaven on earth, will begin with only saved people, the sheep. Now, the believers will have earthly bodies to repopulate the earth, and Zechariah tells us 
uh, what, what they're going to be doing during that time. In Zechariah 14, 16, And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. It states that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts. Now the marriage supper of the Lamb is going to be held on earth soon after the Lord returns. And we read, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's in Revelation 19.9. Now at the last supper, before the Lord went to the cross, he said that he wouldn't drink of the fruit of the vine again until the kingdom of God shall come. That's at the second coming in the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's where he's going to drink wine once again. Now Jesus also said in Luke 12.37, Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. <clears throat> the tribulation martyrs are also raised at the second coming, including the disciples. Now Jesus promises that the disciples would reign over Israel. Look here at Luke chapter 22, uh, verse 29 through 30. And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath uh, appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in the kingdom, and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Now, the devil, Satan, is going to be chained up and thrown into a pit where he's going to be, he's going to be there for a thousand years, okay, all throughout the millennium. And the false prophet, the Antichrist, will be thrown into the lake of fire, and peace will finally be realized during the one thousand year reign of Jesus. Accompanying peace will be justice and unity and abundance and healing and righteousness and joy. All these things are only possible by the physical presence of Jesus Christ being on earth. When Jesus comes at the second coming, he's going to heal the earth from everything that happened during those seven years. Okay, He's going to restore everything back to its beauty and its wonder. Now there's so much information about the tribulation period and the 1,000 year earthly kingdom and obviously we can't cover everything here so I encourage you to search out these things through studying God's Word alright now at the end of the thousand year period Satan will launch uh, his hatred and his war okay he's gonna be unchained for a short time and the unfaithful the unlawful uh, the uh, they're gonna follow him into one final battle against the Lord and his children and the Lord will again weed out the good from the bad then he finally gets rid of Satan he throws him to everlasting fire and here we have the great white throne judgment all the lost people will resurrect from the graves at, to attend their judgment and then God will deal with them accordingly the angels also will be judged then this earth will be destroyed by fire along with our heaven and a new earth and a new heaven will be created okay with God and his children ruling over everything together in peace and harmony now the new Jerusalem will be ushered in along with the new earth and heaven and God's redemption will be complete and people will know him like never before and this is gonna last for eternity the most important thing to remember from all the information we've just discussed is number one make sure you're ready for the rapture okay so you can avoid dealing with all this time of trouble make sure others are ready too. you know spread the gospel plant seeds number two this dispensation the kingdom is a continuation from where God left off with Stephen right before the grace dispensation through our through Paul okay so it's as if God pressed pause when they killed Stephen and after the rapture God presses play to finish his objective with the nation of Israel all right now I know this was a, it's just a general review nothing too detailed but I hope you can at least explain what the seven dispensations are generally and point them out on the chart and I pray that this study has brought some edification to you uh, saints so this ends our study our uh, on our seven dispensations and uh, I really enjoyed it and I hope you guys did too so peace and grace in Christ Jesus be with all of you and I'll see you on my next video